Hello, everyone. Wow. We're the Kennedys. And um, <clears throat> you might have been, if you, if you haven't been following us closely, you might have been expecting a dance party show today. And uh, we had a change of plans. Yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to still do the dance party in the near future. But uh, we thought we would postpone it um, because um, I'm sure most of you probably know we lost a, a, our dear friend and, and also a mentor and somebody we've traveled all around the world with, um, Nancy Griffith, uh, just a couple of days ago. And so we thought, well, we'll take this hour and do a celebration of Nancy's life and, and her music and, uh, and maybe tell some stories about the impact that she had on us uh, personally, um, uh, just as a friend. Um, <clears throat> it is, it's a celebration of her music, so we're not gonna, don't ask us about her personal life or her, anything like that, because we don't know uh, most of that stuff and it, it wouldn't be relevant to what we're doing today anyway. So, um, uh, but if you want to talk about her songs, that's why we're here today, her songwriting. And um, I always ask you if you can hear us well. Um, we want to make sure that <clears throat> you can hear everything and, and you can see everything before we start. Um, I'm going to guess that you can because no one said that you can't. So, um, well, why don't we start? I think we'll need, to, I, I'm going to say this is a tough one for us and, and I apologize in advance if I if I lose it a little bit here and there, but we thought it would be a very safe start to start with something upbeat and happy. One that brings back really great memories for us. I remember playing the song with Nancy in Dallas at an outdoor band, outdoor band shell. Remember this? Yeah. And we were in a band shell and the audience was in front and they could see what we couldn't see, which was a big black cloud heading our way. Nancy launched into this song and <clears throat> within seconds of her starting <laughs> the sky, the sky opened, opened up <laughs> and the whole place just fell apart <laughs> ready yeah oh i wish it would rain wash my face clean i want to find some dark cloud to hide in heat love in a memory sparkles like diamonds Oh 
love that one. It brings back such start. great memories. And we have a million <laughs> yeah. memories. And um, we have a million memories of this next song, too, because um, when I first met Pete, he was touring with Nancy on the uh, um, Late Night Grand Late Hotel Night Grand album. Mm -hmm. And they were recording. Nancy was putting together um, the Other Voices, Other Rooms album. And um, that album was just so epic, not just for Nancy, but for folk fans everywhere, because she um, curated this amazing list of classic folk songs. Some of them I'd never heard before, just real gems, and others that um, were kind of their way back in the back of our minds, and she brought them out front again. And this was a great John Prine song. John, we lost last year. So. Yeah, the, the whole process of recording that album, Other Voices, Other Rooms, was so great because uh, so many people came in to sing. And so uh, we recorded partly in Nashville and partly in Dublin. And um, every time you win the studio, there'd be, you know, Amy Lou or uh, Guy Clark and uh, Chet Atkins and people, just it could be anybody. <laughs> and everyone wanted to be on that album. But when John Prine was there, it was really special because John and, and Nancy, they were like two <laughs> elves when they got together. They had all kinds of little sayings that only they understood. And, they were always kind of looking at each other slyly and laughing about things and, and they had all kinds of wordplay. And so it was always a really special time whenever John Prine was around. And this is really one of his, his greatest uh, songs. Ready? Yeah. Two, three. Am I in the right key or are you in the right key? <laughs> we're in C, C, right? Ah. Uh. No. <laughs> I told you it was going to be rough. Oh, we did in D. Yeah, we changed it to D. My fault. Wait. It's there. Is that D? That's not D. It's D for... Is it D? <laughs> We're kind of, uh, you know, uh, stressed. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Come home late and you come home early. Come home big when you're feeling.
crossed an evil line today. How can you ask about tomorrow? We got one word to say. What in the world's come over you? What in Broken the speed of the sound of loneliness Out there running just to be on the run What in the world's come over you? What in heaven's name have you done? That's for Nancy and, Nancy and John, too. We're going to, um, when, when this show is over, usually after the show airs, I can pop up a little video or a playlist. And um, I've put together a playlist of, of Nancy Griffith performances that we were a part of. And there's a really wonderful version of that. It's me, you, Nancy, and Pat McInerney on the drums. And it, um, they published a little story in NewJerseyArts.com today, and they put that video in there. And I hadn't seen it before. It's at the Cambridge Folk Festival and in it, England. And it just gave me, I was, it was such a gift to see that today. I hadn't yeah. seen that before. Yeah. Well, um, you wrote something uh, about Nancy. Should we do that now? Yeah. And I put together a little sort of a montage. What we wanted to do was show you some of our personal photos. There's lots of photos of Nancy, but these are all ours from the years on the road. And um, we thought it might be, it might be nice to uh, put these photos up while Pete is reading a piece that he, he wrote about Nancy. Um, he wrote this yesterday. The name Nancy Griffith is synonymous with Texas. Not the Texas of the oil men in their mansions on the hills, in their long black limousines. Nancy's voice, sometimes dry like a tumbleweed, sometimes rich and full like the Colorado River after a spring rain, was the voice of the working people, the oil riggers down on the Gulf of Mexico and the red dirt farmers out west. She sang about their struggles, their heartaches, their sun-drenched days, and their dark nights of the soul. Most of all, she sang about a small town Texas girl's dream to see the world at the other end of the two-lane blacktop that stretched out past the city limits, through the mesquite and the cottonwoods. There's a light beyond those woods, and Nancy grew up longing to stand in it. Her songs are gems that reflect that longing. And as she once wrote, when the diamonds fall, they burn like tears. Well, she's finally home now from that long, long road. It's great to see those pictures, isn't it? We have, so, we have a lot of those from all over the place. When I first started playing with Nancy, one of the first gigs we did was um, up in New York. And, um, and the, we would all stay at the Roger Smith Hotel. And I remember um, I was sitting uh, at the bar chatting with Nancy. I was like the new guy in the band. And um, it turned out, of course, that we both loved folk music and we started talking about different artists that we liked. And, and we, it also turned out that we both had been friends with a great songwriter by the name of Kate Wolf, who had passed away some years before that. And uh, we loved Kate Wolf, and, and we thought that her music should get out there. And Nancy said, I'm going to do a whole album of folk songs, 
and I'm gonna start by doing a Kate Wolf song and um, I think that we kind of felt that Kate was like the guiding spirit looking down on that album other voices other rooms and uh, that had something to do with it being so so successful and so the album starts uh, with this uh, little um, uh, solo on the guitar and then when Nancy's voice comes in and you're like everything's great for the next <laughs> 45 minutes <laughs> this is called Across the Great Divide wait 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 I'm 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 not usually like this as you know <laughs> I was in the wrong key in my head ready <laughs> in your head but you're in the right but, key with your fingers and with my fingers I was in the right <laughs> key but in my head I was yeah. see this is where I am the head is in sync too. I know you all forgive me <laughs>
I think we need to do some not sad songs. <laughs> We did a. There's um, plenty of not sad songs. We too. did a Nancy we did a songs. tribute to Nancy. One of our earliest shows, show number seventeen, was a Nancy tribute, and uh, we did a lot of the upbeat stuff, and uh, we didn't want to repeat too many of those. But um, I want to show you something though. That this is this is something that really um, makes me happy. That first tour that we did together, it was Pete's second tour with Nancy. It was my first. Over it was two months in England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. And imagine, I was just out of college. I had moved from Syracuse, New York, down to Austin, Texas. I was playing in the Hill Country bars, little local bars, playing original music to people who weren't listening, you know. <laughs> and uh, I met Pete. He was on the road with Nancy, which very much impressed me because the band I was playing in, um, we used to cover a couple of Nancy Griffith songs. And I'll tell you more about that in a, in a bit, the, the songs that got me into Nancy Griffith. But when uh, Nancy scooped me up in band and uh, we went over for that first tour, I'd never really been anywhere. I'd never traveled internationally. And all of a sudden, here we are on a big plane going across the Atlantic. And our first show is in Liverpool, England. Wow. And mm -hmm. we, that tour, we played one show on and one show off for two months. So wherever we were, the next day we had a vacation day. Yeah. 30 vacation days all over that region of the of the globe. And we met some great people. Um, and I remember having, I just, there's so many memories that I couldn't begin to share them all. But one of my favorite memories actually was at the end of the tour and we were on the plane going back. It was one of those planes where the um, first class is in a sort of upstairs bubble at the front of the plane. And we were um, down in coach, which was fine. Um, we were sleeping most of the way, but about halfway through the flight, um, a young Irish girl, one of the flight attendants, came sort of like bopping down the aisle and she locked eyes with me. She came up to me and she said, would you be Maura Kennedy? Sorry to my Irish friends who are laughing in my accent. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's me. She goes, oh, Miss Nancy Griffith gave this to you. And she handed me a little green box and I opened it up. I'm going to have to stand up to show you this. Nancy brought this Celtic cross. I don't know if you can see it. There it is, a little Celtic cross from Ireland, just for me, on this very fine chain. It's like the width of a strand of hair. And uh, I've always, always, always treasured it. And it just reminds me of that, that wonderful time, our first tour together, our first time ever playing together. Nancy hired us as our opening, as her opening act without we had never, we'd written one song together. We didn't even have an act. So, okay. I think I talked myself out of that, out of that uh, emotional uh, uh, bump in the road. Mm -hmm. But let's do this one because, um, no, I, I think I'm okay. I've recovered, re I've recovered uh, enough to do this one. And I'd like to do this one because this is a song to me that is the most Nancy. At that point in her life, yeah. At least mm -hmm. at that point in her life. Um, because she, uh, we stayed at all those grand hotels. Ready? Yeah. Two, three, four. <laughs> No 
At the time that I started playing with Nancy was when that album yeah. um, came out. I had been playing uh, for the summer of 1991 with Mary Chapin Carpenter, another great song, singer songwriter. And um, but that was a temporary gig. I was sort of um, subbing for uh, her producer John Jennings, who was busy in the studio. And so that that gig had an ending to it, and the ending happened to be Austin City Limits. Uh, uh, sort of acoustic in the round gig. So it was just me and Mary Chapin, not the whole band. And Nancy Griffith and her band were there, and I had never met uh, Nancy before. And also the Indigo Girls and Julie Gold were there too. And um, we all uh, went kind of around, uh, you know, one act at a time playing songs. And it turned out that Nancy's, her drummer, Pat McInerney, was, was a friend of mine, and he said, you know, uh, Bird Burton, Nancy's guitarist, just left the band very recently and we haven't found a replacement yet. And so without being asked, when the show aired, it was sort of a live television type thing. Of course, I played <laughs> on Mary Chapin's songs and just for the heck of it, I played on all of Nancy's songs too, most of which I'd never heard. I mean, some of them <laughs> I knew, but a lot of them I, I had not, the ones from that new album I'd never heard before. And um, at the end of the show, um, Pat, the, Nancy's drummer, said, uh, Nancy's manager would like to have a word with you. And I thought, uh-oh, I'm in a lot of trouble now. It's like the principal's now. office. <laughs> um, but, but they offered me the, the job. So my last day with Mary Chapin was the first day with Nancy Griffith. So what a great experience to play with, with both of them. And, uh, and they said, can you learn all of Nancy's songs and leave for England in 10 days? And I said, yeah, <laughs> yeah I can do that. Are you kidding? And uh, that really was, it was one of those life-changing um, days, you yeah. know, starting with Mary Chapin was life-changing and then with uh, Nancy also too. And uh, so I just feel so lucky to have been in, at, sitting in that chair right at that exact moment. Something was wrong with my guitar. It wasn't, it was, you know, static or something like that. And Nancy, like I said, who I had never met was sitting next to me and she said, 
oh, why don't you just play this one? And she was holding the, the Nancy Griffith guitar <laughs> that, that Taylor had made specially for her. And so that's what I'm playing. If you ever see the show, I'm, I'm playing her guitar that, that she handed me. And that was just the beginning of her total amazing uh, generosity that, that she showed to other musicians, uh, uh, especially her own band members, uh, of which I became one. Well, I see on the chat that we've got some all kinds of friends here, and you're so supportive. I want to say a special shout out to Helen Dunn in Ireland and also Arlene Kenny uh, yeah. in, in Dublin and all her boys who were there. They were little boys when I first met them on that first tour and Nancy adored them. <laughs> and um, and so um, I know that they're they're hurting as much as we all are. So so uh, um, I'm glad you're here and sharing this with us. We're going to do a song. This is one of the first songs I heard by Nancy. I, I remember the very first song I heard by Nancy. Um, I was listening to a little AM station just north of Syracuse, like 20 watt station. Mm -hmm. And uh, a song came on and the voice knocked me out. And I never heard a voice like that before. I had to pull the car over. And uh, that day I went out and bought the record and brought it to my band. And I said, we've got to learn these songs. <laughs> so we were playing Nancy Griffith songs back in about 1988. And uh, this is one of the songs that was a staple for us. Yeah. Humans. 
written by Pat Alger, right? Yes, it was. Who wrote... Um, Once the, in a Very Blue Moon, he wrote? Yeah. yeah. Going Gone, didn't Going Gone. One? Uh, one thing about Nancy is she, I think she could only <laughs> sing from directly from the heart. You couldn't write a song and say, Nancy, this is a hit song. You got to do it. I mean, that she had no interest in that at all. She never thought about whether a song was going to be a hit. It had to be coming directly from her heart. And I think Pat, and if you were going to write a song for her, it had to be something that she would have felt right, her, of course. herself. And so she was a real artist, in, in that, more, much more than a performer. Mm. She was a real, you know, on the level of like, Dylan and people like that who are, are just always wide open and, and sincere and, and you feel what they're, they're feeling. Well, she could write songs like that too. Um, she was able to empathize with struggling people um, in a lot of her songs and in real life for sure. Mm -hmm. um, all the causes, the uh, anti-landmine thing and she, she was just always an advocate for the voiceless. And this song, I think, is the best example of that in any song I've ever heard, um, a song about uh, the Dust Bowl days. I'm going to play the acoustic. Oh, play the acoustic. Because it's about the Dust Bowl days. You, have mm -hmm. to, you can't play electric guitar when you're singing a <laughs> Dust Bowl song. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Two, three, four. Thank you. 
this is a great it's, song. It's a sepia tone song. It is. You see, yeah. it, I always visualize songs when I sing them. That's how I remember words. But I vis when I visualize that, it's always in sepia tone. Yeah, I I picture like um, the cover of Dust Bowl Ballads by Woody Guthrie, yeah. which is a sepia tone photo of people right. running uh, toward their um, kind of hut to get out of the out of the uh, dust storm. And I just pictured that couple uh, when when we'd sing that song, and yeah. when I used to stand next to uh, Nancy singing that song. It's the kind of song. It's about a specific place, but she could sing it all over the world, and people knew exactly what she was yeah. singing about. Yeah. They could identify with it. She had that. Uh, great songwriter capacity of being intensely personal but with a universality to all the songs that's a real that's a gift yeah um i should warn you that we're going to go over and we usually do but um that's okay because we all need this i mm -hmm. think yeah um we're going to do the last song is in cp tone this one is in blue <laughs> this song is a blue song but i don't mean it's, it's a it's kind of a it's a sad song but it's joyful i think it's a very joyful song it's also about people enduring. Enduring, yeah. A lot, that's what some of her songs are about, is endurance. That's what this is about. I'm going to tune, though, because I don't want to start out of tune with this song. I'll tune to you. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> Got to play Nancy Griffith songs in tune. We also want to say hello to Pat McInerney and, and Leanne and Phil Kaufman, all our friends, Bruce McKay. James Bert, Hooker, Bert Stein, Lee uh, Satterfield, wherever you are, I tried to find you. Fran Brain, Ron De La Vega, Ron all the different Blue Moon Orchestra. And of course, Frank is up there with Frank, Nancy now. Frank Christian, yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, and Pete thanks Gorish. to all of you who are checking in. It's great to see so many of our friends from all over the world. And Nancy wrote this, I believe, with um, Danny Flowers, if yeah. I have that correct. Which is perfect, because it's about blue bonnets. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> Some sweet blue 
great song. That's a, a novel or a movie. When I lived in Austin, I remember when I first went down there for a South by Southwest conference, and I knew that song. But I didn't, I thought it was just poetry until I was driving along the highway in, in the median strips filled with blue bonnets. <laughs> yeah. Filled. And I bought a package of seeds and I brought them back home and I planted them um, at my mother's grave and they didn't take. So it's true. The only place on earth blue bonnets grow is in Texas. That's <laughs> the truth. It's the truth, as Nancy <laughs> used to say. All right. This is one we've never, ever played, but I, I've always loved this song. I love the way Nancy sings it. I love the way she wrote it. She wrote a lot of love songs. Yes. From the heart kind of songs, including this one. Two, three, four. Yeah, you did some co-writing with Nancy. I did a few. Um, and we're going to do this one. This is the 
first song I co-wrote with Nancy, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. And it was back when she was she had um, to have some hand surgery, so she couldn't play guitar, but um, she could write lyrics fine. <laughs> she mm -hmm. wrote she wrote a bunch of lyrics. They weren't really formed into uh, a song yet, but they were ideas and uh, stray lines here and there. And uh, she called me up. She said um, she wanted to write a song with me. She would send me the kind of the raw material, and and I would do the guitar stuff and and all that. So we put the song together, and in the process, I learned about this amazing woman, Dickie Chappelle. Yeah. And Nancy always ch championed strong women, and Dickie Chappelle was a fantastic wartime photographer, and it's all in the song. So I'm not going to give you the biography. Mm -hmm. But it was such a joy to write with one of my musical heroes, to yeah. write, actually write a song with Nancy Griffith. And uh, uh, Nancy recorded it and we recorded it. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's out there in the world. And this is called Pearl's Eye View. Two, three, four. Well, she was high up there in the air, caught still by a soldier's stare. If ever it was men amongst men. That's a good one, and yeah, we Nancy knew all about Dickie Chappelle. Yeah, she she sent me uh, an autobiography, an autobiography that Dickie Chappelle had written, which you can't find it. I mean, maybe they re-released it, but at the time I uh, I looked for, I couldn't find it. So Nancy sent me her copy. Anyway, um, this is another song we've never played before, but we're gonna send it out to all of you who have have seen Nancy in concert, and I know that's probably most of you, and I know there's a lot of people here who probably have have never um, seen us. You're probably wondering who the heck we are. 
but um, but you're always welcome here. And this is a song that just, it's a blessing. Yeah, and Nancy lived a life of travel, and, and I think that's the, the basic kind of metaphor for the song, but it's sort of always always going going away from somewhere and going to somewhere. And so that was sort of the dynamic of, of her life. And uh, let's send it out to all the Blue Moon Orchestra people, all the ones we mentioned, and also people like Philip Donnelly and Tom uh, Yutz and uh, Jim Rooney, yeah. who created her the sound of her early albums. And it was so, so key in, in her career. It's called The Wing in the Wheel. She wrote that not just for her band members, but for all her sort of fellow travelers who came up with her, you know, Lyle Lovett and Guy, yeah. Guy Clark and Joe Ely, Butch Hancock, all, all those great Texas people who used to play at Anderson Fair in Houston, and of course Towns Van Zandt, Steve Earl, you know, they all, they were like a, uh, a little gang of, of people who bounced ideas and inspiration of, off, off of each other. Well, speaking of Lyle Lovett, Lyle is on the cover of the album that features the song we're going to do now. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Taken out of Woolworths, remember those? <laughs> in Woolworth and San Antonio, right? Yeah, that's right. So we're going to do this song. And we always, whenever we do a show, if it, whenever we get a request, they always ask for this song. And, yeah. it's, you know, I... It's, I think it's one of her best love songs. Let's send this one out to Kathy Matea yeah. and John Desner. Yeah. Rita was 16 years, hazel eyes and chestnut hair. She made the Woolworth counter shine And Eddie was a sweet romancer And a darn good dancer 
he walls the aisles of a five and dime. Eddie played the steel guitar and his mama cried because he played in the bars. Kept young Rita out late at night. So they married up in Abilene, lost a child in Tennessee. But still that love survived. of a love so sweet dance to the radio sweet song. We're going to do a, a tune that, um, you know, we played with Nancy back in Pete in 92 and me in uh, 93. And then we sort of went off on our own. She pushed us out of the nest. We got a record deal, largely, I think, based on Nancy Griffith's endorsement of having us be her opening act. And um, we started doing our own thing. But Occasionally we would meet up, you know, our paths would cross, we'd jump on stage with her. She jumped, she came to one of our record release parties at the, um, the Cutting Room in New York. We would just cross paths quite a bit over the years. And then in 2010, we played, we, we were booked to open for her, a one-off, in Peekskill. in Peekskill, New York. And we got there, and she no longer had the Blue Moon Orchestra, she just had one accompanist. So, you know, I, it was great to see her. We hadn't seen her in a long time. And we said, you know, we remember all those songs. So if you want a little extra backup, you know, here we are. No charge. <laughs> and um, so 
we got together with the guitar player backstage before the show just to kind of remind ourselves of the songs and we played with her and from then on from uh, December 2010 until her, till her last show and I think it was at the Ark in Ann Arbor in 2014 I think it was which was a great show the best show of the whole tour and um, but we played every single show with Nancy all the shows that she she did and, uh, for the rest of her life but she would never play this song and the reason was just before we met up with her Mary Margaret her best friend passed away and she couldn't bring herself to sing it um, and people always yelled for it and she would say she would be very honest with the audience and say I'm just not ready to do it I'm just not ready I can't do it which I can totally understand but we were doing a, a show at the City Winery in New York and it was a really good show a lot of our friends were there because we were living in New York my sister was in the audience and a bunch of folks we know and it was a great show Nancy felt I could tell she felt good and we went off stage when the when the show ended and the audience loved her they were calling her back for more and uh, I didn't know if she had a, an encore planned or anything but she looked at me and she took a deep breath and she said well if we're gonna do this song anywhere we're gonna do it here in New York City and it's the only time in the, in, uh, in recent memory or even distant memory that I recall her singing this song so we're gonna sing this to her and Mary Margaret and John who are all reunited mm -hmm. yeah. One. Drink the poet's wine 
Another song that could be a whole novel. Let's do this one. Let's just run mm -hmm. into this one. Just do it. Just get in just, there and... Just hit it uh, head on. I'm going to hit it head on. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. One, two, three, four. tradition. I think we're going to end with one more rocker. Um, after this show, as I mentioned, we will, um, it takes a while for the, for this to process. Um, but we will, uh, put up a playlist of songs that we played with Nancy. We're going to get back to our dance party next week. We, we rehearsed all week, so we have a really good show planned out for next week. But this is the first song that I ever heard by Nancy Griffith. I will never forget the experience of hearing her voice for the first time. I fell in love with her, fell in love with her voice, and, uh, and her spirit, the spirit yeah, of the woman, that's a, that's a will cross. always, 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 always be here. Thank you so much for, uh, before I go, thank you so much for, for sharing this with us. It means so much. Yeah. We love you, we love Nancy, and we know you love Nancy. And this is, uh, this is uh, one way that we can kind of process it all together yeah, as friends. It's been so great. It's a, you know, like they call it a celebration of life. Celebration of life and a legacy, amazing yeah. legacy of, of songs. Those are going to live on. Ready? Yeah. She drove west from Salt Lake City to the California coastline. She hit the San Diego freeway doing 60 miles an hour. She had a husband on her bum. Silver 
thank you all so much. Thanks to all the Blue Moon Orchestra people and all, mm. and all of Nancy's uh, songwriter friends. And most of all, thanks to Nancy for this incredible le legacy. And of, for, for all her kindness and yeah, friendship. Both friendship, kindness, generosity, and songs. Thank you all, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>